Welcome to Expand, Dominate, and Profit. I'm your host, Aaron Ryan. And on today's show, we have a big guest out of um, the Maryland area. We have Craig Northrup with Northrup Realty. Welcome to the show, Craig. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. You know, um, Craig, you run a top producing real estate team over in the Maryland, Delaware, D.C., Virginia market. Yes. You've got uh, 14 offices, 250 high producing, high powered agents. Yes. You are yeah, tons of value that we're going to get uh, to share with the audience here today. So we're, we're excited. Uh, Craig, first tell us uh, maybe anybody who hasn't maybe hasn't heard of you or doesn't know anything about you. Maybe fill the audience in a little bit of as far as your background. Well, a little background. I've been doing this business for 35 years. Uh, born and raised it ultimately in the business. My mother's been doing it for 45 years. So they combined about 80 years together. Uh, and, and then I, uh, around 2000, my wife and I uh, started a team called the Craig Northrop Team. Uh, we, we said, if you're going to do it anyway, why not be the best? So we became number one in the nation, uh, the best number one team in the nation three times uh, there. And then once we got to that level that we wanted to do, we call it Reach One, Teach One. Now we're teaching it. We became a brokerage. We have 100% re retention from team to brokerage. We kept all the model, all the full service, everything you did to get to number one in the nation, we brought across to our brokerage. So we're very much of a hybrid. You ever heard of a Tesla? Right. right? It's a very simple thing. If you ever have ever drove a Tesla, if you do drive a Tesla, you never want to give it up. It's the same philosophy. You don't understand the car as much, but it's a, once you get involved in it, it really kind of absolutely operates very well. And, and it's, a, it's a unique hybrid in our area because most brokerages are typically you're just a traditional, you know, sign up and go type of things where ours is, is a plug and play system where everything's done for you. That's awesome. I, you know, Craig, one of the things that we talked about, you know, prior to, to jumping on this was, you know, kind of the quality of what you're doing over there, the support that you're providing to your agents. Maybe tell the, the listeners and the agents who are out there how, you've been able to attract top quality agents to your firm. What makes you a little different than the Keller Williams or Remaxes? I think it's a great question. One thing is I'm a player's coach. I sell, I do almost about 200 million myself personally. So it's very important to be involved in the everyday activities. And by doing that, I know and how to coach an agent versus hiring a coach in Kansas City. I'm just using a Kansas City. I don't know why, but why not? Kansas City, hello. But my point is, is, you know, who in Kansas City can coach somebody in Maryland, right? I don't right. get it, right? You want that boots on the ground, that quality people. So that we attract it first by being the fact that I am an agent, owner, broker type of thing, very much involved. That's first thing. Second thing, uh, I've got incredible leadership. We've got incredible, incredible employees. But, you know, really the, the other side of it is everything that an agent doesn't want to do we have services for it, meaning they're not good at paperwork. We take care of that with client cares. Stagers, you're really nothing personal agents. You're not that great a stager. Stop trying to get there. You know, let somebody else do it. So credit staging professionals. Marketing, you know what? What's amazing, guys, is you throw one ad out. It doesn't work. You stop. So you're not really good at it. Nothing personal. Let somebody else be better at it, right? IT, hire somebody younger. That's my right. <laughs> IT department. And then training. Guys, why not be trained by others that have already been where you want to go, right? So my philosophy, when my wife and I were, were trying to get up the chain to try to be number one, right? That was our ultimate goal, was we flew around the country. We went out and met McMonagle and Ruth Pugh and the Jills and Ryan Sir and all the ones that were in our markets, not, not our markets, are you know in the same level that we were or, or better, and we learned from them. And that's how we became that. So we took that whole philosophy and brought it back into brokerage. So now every agent learns from every agent. So it's more of a family-ish, team-ish atmosphere, but it's still BYOB, bring your own brand. They're building their own teams. We have 30 plus teams growing very well. I think the, our top team did 120 plus million last year. Um, I mean, and then we've got, you know, the individual's agent. So it's on both sides. So, you know, we're growing both. Our ultimate goal in each of the counties we service is to have the number one single agent and the number one team in every county that we service. And that's our goals. And we're going to help train them that way. Because to be honest, knowledge is confidence, confidence is trust, trust is sale. Again, the more you can get knowledge and the more you're around, success begets success, right? So right. at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to create. So that care atmosphere, that environment, that culture is just ever thriving. 
Right. So Craig, you have 250 agents in 14 offices. Yes. One of the things that, you know, as somebody who's opened multiple offices also, right, and expanded into different states knows, it, one of the toughest parts for us as broker owners is being able to duplicate the culture of your, your main office or your, your, you know, your hub office. Right. How do you replicate and maintain the culture from office to office when you're not there every day? That's a, that's a great question. First of all, I rely a lot on my wife that helps a lot in this conversation. Everyone matters and we really kind of touch and feel and especially when COVID started, we over communicated. You know, I think that was very important key to keeping everybody together. But then the, we do certain things to find other ways. And so first of all, the, to answer that question, leadership, we have great leaders, right? We have, you know, uh, different leaders that have different responsibilities that are consistently touching them. We have amazing managers. You know, it all comes down to the people that are around you, right? right? You can't be everywhere. If somebody can do it 70% of as good as you can, let them do it. And I think that's what happens and you have to delegate that. But they have to be already feel the culture first. So I'll give you an example. We are a team. Uh, when we, we set a goal, we took everyone to the Risk Carlton if we hit our goal, all inclusive. We wanted them to feel like, our, like we want our clients to feel. And so right. that feeling is what our culture core people that have been with us for a while are able to spread called spread the love right spread to each offices and each one's treated the same there isn't no step kids and all that you know like there isn't that there is everyone's treated equally offices all look the same they're all you know all so well serviced they get the best you know best uh you know the the client cares the hmcs all the different systems that they have all of them operate that way now we come back together Things like closer club, where we have happy hours, we hit the closer clubs and you have, you know, round tables. Now we just started doing right on Wednesday so that there's consistent interaction, right? Even though we're not right. in our offices as much with COVID, it's consistent interaction. You can right. still do it. It's not as great as human interaction, but at least it's substituted until you get back to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Craig, with the 250 agents, what was your guys' overall transaction count and sales volume for last year? Uh, 3,400 3, transactions and $1.4 billion. $1.4 billion. Yes. Billion. That's incredible. The, the, uh, the year prior was thanks a billion. You know, that was the year <laughs> prior. So this year was right. $1.4 billion. And we lost 60 days because, obviously, of COVID. When you... When you shut down and you do a stay at home order, you know, you really can't sell real estate for about 30 days. It affects 60 days because it takes you, you know, it's like momentum. So we really lost 60 days last year. Right. Playing to my, you know, when we did our kickoff meeting, I, you know, and, and, and so that, so if you added that on, our goal was 2 billion last year. That's, that's incredible. I mean, 1.4 billion in 10 months out of the year. That's, that's incredible production, Craig. Thank you. So, Tell us about your agents, right? So the people who are out there listening, either they're building a team, they're, they're on a team, or they're a single agent. You have, I mean, your, your production per agent is incredible. What are, how are your agents getting business right now, typically, if it's coming from the company? Well, company, so there's many different ways. We are, we are partners with Zillow's. We do work with Zillow, Realtor.com, which are two big players in our marketplace. You get, you know, we're the number one uh, connector of both of them in the state of Maryland and obviously growing in Delaware and, and Virginia and DC. Um, and then you have things like, uh, because we have a lot of the market share, the listings, we get a lot of buyer calls, right? And we get a right. lot of, our offices are like billboards because they're in locations that are just highly visible. Like, you know, I always say, don't be a secret agent and don't have a secret office, right? right. You're going to have an office be an office, right? And we're on, you know, ours are front and center. They're right there. We get a lot of walk-ins. And then what also happens because we do things like, you know, we do a lot of TV and we're, we're our commercials now are, 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 are ranked. We've had Emmy winning commercials. We ran one on the Super Bowl actually, is wow. that people, people actually call us and say, I want, I want the kind of marketing, you're marketing your brokerage. I want the marketing for our house, right? It's the same concepts. And uh, so we get a lot of people that want to sell their homes with us, which we're very blessed. And all of our agents are trained professionally, just absolutely outstanding agents. We're all full time. Oh, by the way, our brokerage only hires full time unless the only way you can be part time on our brokerage is if you're on a team. OK, because we believe 
100% the team leader has to be a full time, of course, right. and then they can be part time on the team members. But you know, we believe that the service of real estate requires full time attention. Absolutely. No, yeah. I, I, I agree. call it, by the way, I mean, interrupt it. I call it all the time agent. It's not a full time agent. No, no, no. Somebody asked me one time about a full time agent. I said, no, no, no. It's an all the time agent. Big difference. Right, right. Real estate's a 24 seven business, right? It's Without all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of intrigued me there with, with talking about your marketing. So you won an Emmy for a commercial? Yes. It's called Blue Box. And so it's a really cool commercial. And uh, what was really neat about that was it, it takes the, through the life, right? So it's the first, first is uh, it walks you through the, um, in a, you know, how you, it's a blue box is called. And it, you know, when they, they were out there uh, hiking and he proposed with the blue box, you know, that was the great, right. we kept the blue box. And then the first house had a key in it, which was kind of cool, right? So the key right. to the first house. Then the last one was they're in front of their new house. All of a sudden, the blue box, and it was a pacifier for a baby. Oh, that's great. Who, right? who comes up with that? Well, honestly, you know, as Capalza, which is a company that, uh, that produced that, it's a combination of our leadership and Capalza, who has certainly helped us. Great marketers. I got a chief business, uh, a chief brand officer. Um, who actually came from Capital One. And then I've got a chief marketing officer uh, as well. So we got some really good talent in our marketing department, which by the way, as I say, bring your own brand. We're going to build your brand with us, you know, ultimately. So we create marketing for our agents, all complimentary. I mean, we really are one of them full service, literally full service, uh, where you come in as an agent, guess what you get to do? Spend time with the client and sell. Sell, Incredible. sell, 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 sell. And that's what real estate should be about. Right, right. So Craig, if you were going to give advice to somebody who was looking to build a team, right? I mean, you know, I remember when I first started, it started with my, it was just me and my assistant, right? Mm -hmm. And we had to build the team from scratch. If you have people out there who are looking to be the next Craig Northrup, right? They, they want to build something that's, that's as outstanding as you built. What advice would you have for them? First, first and foremost, lead by example, right? I mean, I always say this, and one of the things that I think helped me successful, certainly with my wife being as my partner, was also is I never asked somebody to do what I wouldn't do myself. If it was whether to put open house signs up, whatever it was, whatever the task was, always be that lead by example and always don't ask someone to do what you wouldn't do, period. Because I think a good leader needs to be involved. I don't think a leader is a, a, a dictator, right? right? I think dictators are wrong. I think the problem with our business models of real estate is that there's a lot of team leaders by name, but not by nature. And I right. think by nature is have passion for the business, love what you do, care about everybody, right? And, and, and be consistent in all you do and, and treat everyone equally. And all that good stuff is what leadership's first about. Then decide to be a team leader. Don't, don't do it opposite, right? right? Don't just throw yourself in and go, I want to be a team leader, yay, because I'm in it for the money or the residual income that it does bring. Now, don't get me wrong. There are three types of, there are only three ways to make money in real estate. I know we hear all kinds of other ways, right? There's all kinds of stocks, all this other stuff. But really, right. really one of them is sell more real estate. The model that any broker should build or team leader should build is allow your agents to sell more real estate, right? Bam, sell more real estate. That's number one. Number two, build a team. Residual income of a team is going to be probably the most highly profitable money you'll ever make in building your empire in real estate. And then, of course, buy more rental properties or, you know, and like that, because obviously it's always a good time to, to, to kind of keep housing. In, you, you know it best. Stick with what you know. Right. You know? And I think that's why, you know, why we have or have done so well, uh, you know, throughout the, the years. Right. Um, so Craig, when you started the, the team with you and your wife, what did that look like? Was it just you and her? Was it you, her and a handful of agents? Cause you, you'd reference your mom had been in the business. Yeah, and no, it was honestly, I was actually my hardest competitor. People have always asked Craig, what's your toughest, what was your toughest competitor through your career? Right. And I said, it was my mother. Actually, I had to compete with my mother against it because she did. And real estate is all about the name in some ways, right? Right. The branding and name, right? Uh, the brokerage house, right? There you go. Right. That's a name. 
And right. so my mother had Elaine Northrup name. She did a great job. She built a great name for herself. She was in the Million Dollar Agent uh, book that I think Gary put out, you know, right. all of that, right? So she was very well known. I ultimately, in order to get a name, I had to go on my own. So my wife and I, Lily, were on a park bench and said, let's just go do it. She supported it. We both did it. And we came to Craig Northrup team against Elaine Northrup. Basically, that was it, right? One door here, one door here. You pick which door you want to go in. You know, wow. it was very, very tough. And right. so for two years, we literally competed. Very tough, very emotional to compete with your mother, uh, to be honest. And then what happened was ultimately is, you know, if you can't beat them, you join them ultimately. And she joined us about two years later. So your answer back to your question, I started with one. I actually, my first buyer agent, it was my first buyer agent was a, a sold newspapers to me. And I said, boy, you'd be really good at sales. So I hired them. And they, she was a rock star, right? So that was my first. Then as soon as I got my first buyer agent, then I got an administration person. And then it started growing from there, right? As so I started providing support and guidance and coaching and all that great stuff, agents started swarming around. And I realized the number one thing I learned way early if I'm going to be a team leader is you're a rainmaker. You have to be a rainmaker. You know, what benefit is there to, to get on a team for making it rain? leads obviously leads your leadership you know all the different things that is why you won't do it on your own a little bit because you have a built-in mentor they're getting leads and and you're you know you're you're creating a culture that possibly you couldn't do on your own and with us we've actually created in our brokerage which is un unique to the brokerage model right no absolutely um craig when you started you know when you started your company right you you right. you started i mean you basically started the brand over again right away from your your mother it was a completely different thing right, right, right. and you've dominated four markets with the craig northrop brand and, and northrop realty right yes. what advice do you have for agents out there looking to build that household name or that household brand to where when people think shoot i'm going to sell my house I'm going to call Craig. How, how do you, what advice do you have for agents trying to build there or teams? You know, I, first awareness, people have to know you, right? I always say, here's my challenge of branding. Walk in a room without a name tag and let them know who you, what you let, have them know your name, right? So basically instead of a name tag, imagine walking in a room and they say, well, there's Craig Northrop. It happens here, right? The neat thing about that is, is because how does it start? Well, a couple of things. One, community. Being in the community, putting yourself out there with the community, very important. Obviously, sporting things with the kids and stuff like that, that's another connector, right? There's plenty of connectors. My biggest success, if I had to sit back and say one of my biggest things is I partnered up with the University of Maryland. And, uh, you know, and I said, my first commercial that I did uh, was, I'm a University of Maryland graduate. I'd like to help sell your home. I was it. I, I didn't say anything else. And it went crazy. <laughs> But you know why? Because no one else did it, right? It was more of do something when no one else is doing. Guys, right. I didn't have social media. That thing's free. I spent a lot of money. Right. right. That's the kind of stuff, guys. You guys can get very creative on the social media platforms and all the other stuff. We're still, we have secret agents with free opportunity. I didn't have it. My mother, I joke about this, her phone was a pay phone. It cost her 10 cents every time to close the deal. It was a lot of money. Right? <laughs> so then guess what? But it put pressure on her. Right. right. She became a closer because of the 10 cents. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's, I mean, that's, that's incredible. I mean, that's so Craig, when you look at your, your marketing right now, cause you're doing, I mean, a lot of the same stuff that, that most of us are doing, right? I mean, I personally, my brokerage, I have Zillow, I have Realtor.com, I have radio, I have TV, I have billboards, I have all that stuff. You're doing it at an extremely high level. When you sit back and you look at all your pillars of marketing business, how would you rank your, what are your top three as far as ROI? Uh, for ROIs, you know, I, I mean, I guess what I look at for ROIs is first of all, build agents better. Right. right. Make them better. Because I think the problem is, in, I don't care how much business you got, but if, you're, if your agents don't, aren't, you know, we, we take them through Elevate, a we have Elevates and all different types of classes. We have what they call Northern View, which is a training facility just for our agents, literally just for our agents. We don't train wow. any other brokerages, just for our agents. Uh, Under Armour did it for University of Maryland, really cool where he trained, you know, the, the athletes, very similar. 
And so we just train them. We make them the best agents possible. So when that lead does come in, they exploit it and get five or six from it. So it doesn't always come from that one opportunity. You follow me? Oh, I got a bad lead. What's a bad lead? It's a lead, right? right. I don't get it. It's a bad agent, not a bad lead. Pick it, right? right? I mean, that's right. the answer, right? It's a mindset. So first and foremost, build agent, right? Build the agent because if you don't have a foundation, the house will never survive, right? So build better agents, period. That's the number one pillar for us. Number two, do what everyone else is not doing. And I mean not doing. They don't, in our business, we don't even return phone calls. Be more professional. Do the things that things are not happening on a consistent basis, right? right. There are three uh, w- within that, you know, people always say, well, how do you close so much business, right? Three things. One, first of all, we care, right? You don't care what you know until you know what you care, right? You got to care. And care as a leader, care as an individual, care as a broker, you got to care, right? right? You got to know that. So care is a very important part and we have a care culture. Number two, be consistent. Marketing doesn't work once in a while. Everything we do is consistent week after week after week. You're seeing it. You're at a point where you're going, you know, when you buy a car, it's everywhere. When you walk into one of our offices or or call us, you start seeing it everywhere. It's pretty cool. Right. The last is confidence. Right. So the three C's, right. Build that confidence. You don't, why you want, why are you going to walk into a seller's house without being confident you're going to sell their house? Right. You should have the, all the assets to be able to sell that property. Right. Right. So building your agents better, giving them the most amount of assets and, and then allowing them the freedom to go ahead and sell. Right. Give them the freedom. I don't think defining somebody as a buyer agent versus a seller agent is crazy. It, you know, my point is, is they're an agent. They're right. an all the time agent. They can buy, sell, rent. They can do whatever it takes to service that client the best because customer service will thrive through COVID. And it has shown that it has even more. And it said, if you take the three C's, care, uh, uh, care, consistency, and confidence, you take the C off a of close, you lose. Right, right. Well, that's, that's great stuff. Well, Craig, I want to thank you for being on the call today, being on the podcast. You know, anybody out there listening, if you've got buyers, sellers, anybody looking to, to buy or sell a home in the Maryland, Delaware, D.C., Virginia area, there's nobody better to refer those buyers and sellers to than Craig Northrup. Craig, anybody wants to send a referral your way, they want to get in touch with you, how do they reach you? I tell you, phone number 410-531-0321, website www.northruprealty.com or my email, cnorthrup at northruprealty.com. I'm around. You remember Northrup Grumman? You'll remember how to spell Northrup, right? So it's that simple. If you want Maryland, if you want Delaware, if you want uh, D.C. or Virginia, I'm going to handle it the way you will handle it. I assure you pick up the phone, email me. We're going to take good care of them right away the way you should. That's who you should refer to, not just somebody you don't know. Absolutely. Well, anybody out there that wants to reach me directly, you can find me on Instagram at Aaron Ryan, or you can call me at the office at 503-343-1666. Again, Craig, appreciate your time today. Pleasure, Aaron. That was really fun.